think most of us are very much aware, well aware, that people, including ourselves, will not deal with their personal issues until they have to. Hi, this is Barry Phillips with 10 Minute Torah, day number three of the Torah portion of so. Let's go to Numbers, Bemidbar, chapter number five, again reading from verse one, for some words that are very much not politically correct. It says, and Yahweh spoke to Moshe, saying, Command the children of Israel to send out of the camp every leper and everyone who has a discharge and whoever becomes defiled for a being. Send out both male and female. Send them outside the camp so they do not defile their camps in the midst of which I dwell. <laughs> Can you imagine? Can you imagine not just your community, your local congregation, your local group, your local friends and family saying, ah, you have a discharge, you have a skin disease, you have an issue, so you have to go outside the camp until we rectify this. Today's agenda is that of very much the, the doctrines of tolerance, acceptance and inclusion no matter what issues may be there we simply are not allowed according to the politically correct camps to define a person under such terms we are all family we're all human beings we all have stuff so therefore we do not have the right to judge to discern to determine to distinguish uh, we must be open and accepting to all under every circumstance. Yeah, in contrast to modern heartthrob society, says no, make a distinction. There are those that are clean, there are those that are unclean, and they need to be separated. If you have such a defiling, keyword here, defiling issue, then you must be sent outside the camp. This is not the same as sending them into exile or um, sending them to prison. They're not being punished, they're being isolated. They're being put in a place where they can deal with their stuff, where they will have a goal of, I want to return. I don't want to live out here. So I will do what I need to do in order to make my return. I'm going to deal with my stuff. Anyone who has dealt with an addict, an addict of any sort, you know and understand that such a person will go through many phases of reaching what you will call their bottom. These are false bottoms, and you think they can't allow themselves to go any further. They won't go any further down. They won't destroy their lives any more than what they already have. They will surprise us, typically so. And so those who deal with addictions, especially you understand that there are false bottoms on your journey well, way down to the reality bottom. We would like those moments of crushing life experiences, results of behavior that are negative to, to bring them to some sense of reality, sense of understanding, I can't go on this way. I need help, and I'm willing to receive it. Again, oftentimes we will find that people will overcome. They will get through. They will survive. They will say, see, it's not so bad. And they explain things away, and they hide their stuff. But you don't have to be an addict. It doesn't have to be that kind of issue. When we are... When we are among those that constantly go through a, a parade of friends, we build a new relationship, it lasts for a period of time, and we find a way to destroy it, to break it apart, to, to challenge it to a place to where it's no longer functioning beneficially for either side. 
We'll blame someone else. It's all their fault and walk away and start all over again. You can call that narcissistic behavior. You can call it a lot of different things. Simply put, there are those who simply do not know or understand how to deal with a functioning, fruit-bearing, life-giving relationship. They've never been taught how. They've never experienced that. Yes, there may be some, some very negative root issues going on, but some people just simply don't know how to get along. They have anger issues, resentments, etc., if you allow that and its defiling means to come into your home, into your community, into your worship community, and it sits there, you can have compassion. You can have tenderness toward them. You can offer them advice. You can offer them prayer. You can offer them counsel. You can do a lot of good and positive things. It does, however, come down to their willingness to deal with their issues. What I'm describing is some of the less colorful ideas about discipleship. We want to put everybody in a classroom, pull out a common book of study among us, and go through and answer the questions at the end of every chapter, and believe that in doing so, we're going to fix people and their problems. Rarely does a discipleship course manual of study get deep enough to deal with roots. We deal with surface issues. It's like going to your local physician. What are your symptoms? Let me treat your symptoms. You go home, you feel better, but then the root is still there and it causes something else later on. Oftentimes that's the case. We cannot treat people symptomatically. We recognize the symptoms, but Jan wants to go further. He wants to get to our root. That's the part of our lives that we hide. We put under lock and key. We dare anybody to venture that deep into us because we don't trust. When you can't trust yourself to deal with the ugly in yourself, that hidden part of yourself, then it's rare that you're also going to trust other people to get in there and start digging around. Yah is still saying to us, I want to heal you. I want to deliver you. I want to break these chains. But you've got to be willing to allow the people who have the key to get close enough to unlock them for you. So the problem is obvious. They physically, they physically show up. It's, it's Sarat. It is the skin disease that shows that there's an inward spiritual malady. There's a discharge. Why are we having a discharge? Is there a bodily function problem? Uh, have we been in contact with the dead? Then we need to go outside the camp until we're clean. Some issues are light. They're surface. They're easy to deal with. We rectify them. We come back in. Other things take some time, and it takes some healing. Well, can't we just treat them in our homes? Can't we just welcome them into our belief communities? And because of our great love and our great patience and our great wisdom, we're able to fix them while they sit among us. I'd like to say that that's the case sometimes, maybe. But there are those then that we know they need to be separated. Rav Shul talked about the one who was involved in gross sin living with and having a intimate relationship with his stepmother. Throw someone out of the camp, he said. Isolate them until they come to their senses and repent. Later on, he had to tell that same congregation, don't leave him out there. He's repented. Now bring him back in and restore him. So there needs to be, even in the course of modern discipleship, reproof, rebuke, uh, instructions, caregiving, deliverance, and then restoration. It's not easy work, but Yeshua gave himself to it. He called us to it. He's entrusted to us the ministry of reconciliation. It's hard work, but it's worth it when we can get him from outside the camp, back inside the camp, and functioning correctly. Yah, help us in this and give us great wisdom. 
more tomorrow to the inshallah.